welcome back to the shop. I had a viewer question uh, relating to the headset and the cable routing system on the R11 rim brake frame. And we went back and forth a couple times with some questions and answers and he asked a very good question. I thought it might be easier to do a, a video that explains it rather than writing a detailed response. So that's what I'm gonna to do today. Let's get started. Okay, so the question the viewer had was this. Why did you use the round spacers? It looked skinny underneath the stem. So I told him, well, the quick answer to that is, it's a rim brake frame. Um, but I was curious about that myself when I opened up the parts package and I had both this set of spacers and retainers. I've taped it together, but these are separate pieces and a bunch of regular old brown stem spacers. So I assume that this was the piece that would be used, but that's wrong. I put it on the frame. It doesn't fit the frame. Uh, so we'll talk about that a little bit more later too. Um, so in any event, I asked Jasmine at Yolio, I said, what's the deal with the spacers? And she says, well, you use the round spacers for the rim brake frame. You use these spacers for disc brake frame. Um, the disc brake frame has fully internal cable routing. These spacers are designed so the cables can go in that slot. The fork steering tube comes through there like that. And there's still space in the front to run the cables. And they go down into the head tube and then through the down tube and etc. cetera. Uh, so the short answer is it's a rim brake frame. It's a different design head tube and it's not fully internal cable routing. So use the round spacers. But he had some follow-up questions, which were good. And we finally got to the point where he said, uh, is it possible to use the round spacers and s somehow run the, the cables internally anyway? And the quick answer to that is no, it's impossible. Uh, sure, you could jimmy things around. You could cut slots in the spacers uh, that would seriously diminish the strength of the spacers, but that's not the biggest issue. So you'd have to cut a slot about from there to there to run all the cables in there. And then what do you do? Well, what's underneath the spacers? Well, you've got a top cap that fits onto the top of the frame on the rim brake and the disc brake frame. And this is the top cap for the disc brake frame. Well, on the rim brake frame, the top cap has an interior diameter the same as this. So what do you do? Well, you've got a slot cut in here. Now you gotta cut a slot in the top cap. Well, that clearly won't work. Uh, and then it, even if you did that, what's underneath the top cap? Well, underneath the top cap, you've got a, a bearing and a clip that goes inside over the fork tube down and holds a bearing so the fork tube the fork tube is precisely centered inside the interior race of the of the bearing now this bearing here is a bottom uh, bearing for my r11 rim brake frame and the bottom of the uh, the head tube has a different bearing than the top of the head tube because the fork is tapered. It's one and an eighth inch at the top, one and a half at the bottom. So this bearing is 52 millimeters outside diameter. And I think the bearing on the top tube is 41.8 outside diameter. So it's a lot smaller than this bearing. 
It's bigger than that, smaller than that. Anyway, there's just no way to run the cables um, in inside. So if you want a full internal cable routing, you have to get the disc brake. Now, I'd like to have full internal cable routing. I think that kind of looks cool and whatever. Um, but it's not that big a deal to, to me. And I'd rather have rim brakes than disc brakes just because they're simpler and they work just fine. Uh, and the type of riding I do, I don't really need disc brakes for the improved braking modulation and whatever the other advantages are. So the answer to that viewer's question is no. If you buy the rim brake frame, you cannot somehow figure out a different way to run cables internally through the head tube. So you look at the, the design of this for the rim brake frame and you can clearly see, okay, it's designed so that you can run the cables through there. Furthermore, the bottom diameter of this piece that fits on top of the head tube is about 56 millimeters outside diameter. 56 millimeters. Now, the same piece that fits on top of the head tube on the rim brake frame is 46. So, what's that tell you? Well, that tells you that the, the head tube itself on the frame is a different design. It's fatter at the top end and it's 10 millimeters uh, more diameter at the top end than the rim brake frame so it's all designed so that you can run the cables through there um, and once you fit this on the bearing and that goes into the top of the head tube you can look down in there and see that there's still room on the inside of the bearing. There's still room on the inside of the bearing to run those cables. There's plenty of room. So that just isn't the same with the rim brake frame. So that's really the difference there. That's a, a round piece. And that tube there, and this diameter is 46 millimeters this diameter that's 56 so that's a much bigger piece so the frame has to be designed differently for this to fit and then the handlebars will fit on top here this will go like this I'm sorry so the handlebars would go on there this part goes to the frame. Cables go in there, come out the handlebar just like that, but it comes through the handlebar and out a port in the middle of the bar underneath, about right there. And from that port, it's gonna drop down into there. So you're not gonna see the cables. Um, that's the deal. There's no way to jimmy that. If you want full internal cable, get a disc brake frame. Um, if you don't want disc brake, this is this is the setup you have. And I made that DI2 wire kind of disappear by shrink wrapping it together with the brake cable, which the brake cable housing, which there's no way to hide this by going through here. Okay, and still, even with that, you've got the front brake cable housing that's going to show up. Now, when I first saw a bike with all the wires running internal, I thought, well, that's damn cool. And it is. Uh, but it does present some issues once you've got the whole thing assembled. You want to make sure you do it quite right and that the stem height is done right because if you have to make a change, it's a pain in the neck. But do it right, get it set up, it's really kind of cool. I get that, but I'm a rim brake guy 
rim brakes. They don't look ugly. They work just fine. Overall, it's a lot less stuff going on on the bike than with disc brakes. Disc brakes, you, you don't get rid of this. You just have a different design caliper. You don't get rid of these brake pads. You have different design brake pads. Yeah, it's just, it works just fine if you get it set up right. But there's all kinds of problems with disc brakes, uh, rubbing, noises, bleeding the hydraulics and all of that. It's, it's more than I want to do. I'd rather do different things on my bike than fiddle around with the brakes all the time. The brakes, you want to get them set up and then they're done. Every now and then you might have to take a look at it, but I don't know. It's all what you like, isn't it?